So today's video is about writing and graphing inequalities. So when you're graphing an inequality, you can represent the solution to an equation or an inequality by graphing it on a number line. So first here we have this equation x equals 2. So that means our dot would be on the x. And then for this inequality, we can also use a number line. We have x is greater than 2, which means x is going to be everything 2 and above, or everything above 2. So when you're, a graph, when you're graphing solutions to an equation, you're going to use a solid dot. And the circle states that the solution is the dot's value. And basically with an equation, there's only one solution. So there's only one answer. So that means you're just going to only have one dot on your number line. So I have 5 plus x equals 7. And I know that if I solve this, that x would have to equal 2. So if I were graphing this, I would show a number line. And then I would show my dot at 2. And that would be the graph of my equation. So when you're graphing inequality solutions, it's a little bit different because within an inequality solution, it's more than one answer. You're allowed to have more than one answer. You have multiple solutions. So not only are you going to be using dots, but you're also going to be using arrows. Now there are two different dots that you can use. There's the solid dot and the open dot. Now the solid dot is used when the inequality is less than and equal to or greater than and equal to because the solid dot means that you can include that number. The open dot is um, shown when you have the less than or the greater than and that means that you can't include that number. You can be greater than that number, you can be less than no that number, but you can't be equal to that number. So you have the solid dot and then the open dot. And then the arrow to the left is used for less than and the arrow to the right is used for anything that's greater than. So let's look at this example. So I have x is less than or equal to 3. And keep in mind, when you're reading an inequality, you read it left to right. And if you see the pointed side first, then that means that this is a less than symbol. If you see the open side first, that means it's a greater than symbol. So if we're reading this left to right, we have x is less than or equal to 3. That means x can be any number less than 3, or it can also be equal. So I'm going to use the closed dot. And I'm going to put that on the 3 because I am allowed to be equal to 3. And then I'm going to use the arrow to the left because x can be anything less than 3 as well. So that means any of these values would be a solution to this inequality. Then for this one, I have x is just less than 3. So this time, instead of using the open, I mean the closed dot, we're going to use the open dot because you're not allowed to be equal to 3. You can be less than 3, but you can't. You can't be equal to 3. So again, we're going to use the open dot. And we're still going to make our arrow go to the left because it's all of the numbers that are less than 3. So let's do a few together. So we're first going to graph this first inequality, which x is less than 0. So that means x can be any number less than 0. And because it can't be equal to 0, we're going to use the open dot. And because we're using the open dot, that means that it can be less than that, but it can't be equal to 0. And because it's less than 0, then it's going to also be all the numbers below that. So we're going to show the arrow to the left. So this would be the graph of x is less than 0. Then our second graph is for x is less than or equal to 1. So because x is allowed to be equal to 1, we're going to use what's called the closed dot because it's allowed to be equal to that exact number. So we're going to use the closed dot on the 1. And again, x is less than or equal to 1. So again, we're going to use the arrow pointing towards the left. It's all the numbers below 1 and 1 itself. Then this time we have this equation. So this isn't even an inequality. This is an equation because it's just an equal sign. And we want to graph that x equals 8. And remember, with an, equ with an equation, there's only one solution. So that means you should only see one dot and no arrow. So x equals 8. So we're going to actually just put a dot on the 8. And it's going to be the closed dot because x is allowed to be equal to the number 8. 
Then our last one, we're going to graph x is greater than 7. Well, because it's not allowed to be equal to 7, that means we have to use the open dot. And so we're going to use the open dot to represent that x can be greater than 7, but it can't be equal to 7. And because it can be greater than 7, we're now going to do the arrow going towards the right side because it can be anything above the number 7. So now let's do a couple word phrases and we're going to still show these word phrases on our graph and we're still going to represent them by graphing them on a number line. So now we have Tommy, and we're going to use T to represent Tommy, has at least $52. So you have to think about, well, what does at least mean? Well, at least means that you have at least that amount, that you, have, that you either have that exact amount or you have something more than that. So at least is actually the symbol for greater than or equal to, because you can be greater than $52, he can have... Um, exactly $52, but he doesn't have less than $52. So when we write our inequality, we would write it as Tommy T, the amount of money he has is greater than or equal to $52. So now what we want to do is we want to graph this on our number line. And number lines do not have to start at zero. So we can actually have our number line start where we want it, and it needs to make sense. So we actually can just put 52 right here on our number line. We can fill in the other numbers if we'd like, but really it's most the most important part is are you above 52, are you below 52, and are you using an open or a closed dot? So because he can have exactly $52, we're going to use a closed dot. And because he can have more than $52, we're going to show our arrow going to the right. So that means he can have more than $52 or exactly $52, but he doesn't have less than $52. So then the next one says, no more than 300 students can fit in the cafeteria. So that tells us that the, the, the biggest number of students, the greatest number of students we can have in that cafeteria is 300. So then the question is, well, can we have less than 300? Well, we can have less than 300. Can we have exactly 300? Well, yeah, because it says no more than. So that means we can have exactly 300. But can we have more than 300? And the answer is no. So this no more than basically lets me know that I'm going to use the symbol less than or equal to. I can have less than 300 students. I can have exactly 300 students, but I cannot have more than 300 students. So then when I write my inequality, my inequality will be S is less than or equal to 300. So the number of students can be less than 300 or exactly 300, but no more. So again, we want to put our number 300 on our number line. Once we've got it on our number line, we've got to decide are we using an open or a closed dot. Well, because you can have exactly 300 students, we're going to use the closed dot. And then because you can have less than 300 students, we're going to show the arrow to the left. Then we have Sue has more than, five, more than five pencils. So again, we're looking here at our important words, and we know we have more than. So this more than lets me know. that she can have more than five. She actually has more than five, but then the question is, does she have exactly five? Well, she doesn't have exactly five. She has more than five, though. So that would be a symbol for the greater than, but we're not equal to five. If she had exactly five, we would have something, the phrase would say something different. It says she has more than five pencils. We don't know how many more, but we know she has more than five. And we're going to use P, and so that means the number of pencils that Sue has, P, is greater than five. Then again, we've got to graph that on our number line. So we're going to put 5 onto our number line, and we've got to decide, are we using the open or the closed dot? Well, it says she has more than 5, so that means we're not including 5 in our answer. So we're going to actually use the open dot. And because she has more than 5 pencils, then that means our arrow needs to go toward the right, because she has more than 5. So that means she can have any number greater than 5. Then we have Abby here. She has less than $12. So if we know that Abby has less than $12 in her account, 
we know that less than is our important word and we know that we're going to use a symbol for less than. So that means Abby is A and she has less than $12. Again, we want to go ahead and graph that. So we're going to put our 12 on there. She has less than 12, but she doesn't have exactly 12. So that means we've got to use the open dot. And because she has less than that, then we're going to do our arrow going toward the left. So as you can see, when you're graphing inequalities, the first thing that's really important is to know when to use the open and when to use the closed dot. The open dot is used when you can't include that number, when you can be greater or less than, but you can't be equal to that number. And then the closed dot is used when you are allowed to be equal to that number. And then, of course, your arrows, if it's an arrow to the left, that means you're less than, and if you have your arrow going to the right, then that means you are greater than. And with equations, because they only have one solution, you would just show one dot, a closed dot, with no arrows. All right, go ahead and teach the tiger something you learned in today's video.